Servus and welcome to Vienna, the capital and largest city of the Republic of Austria, Germany's Canada. No, but seriously, Vienna is such a beautiful city and one that has been so important to Central European history for so long that I may or may not use some of the stock footage I shot here for later videos. I mean, that wouldn't be the first time I did that. But we're not here to talk about the city of Vienna, we're here to talk about the country of Austria, and specifically how it relates to its big brother, Germany. Germany and Austria have more or less a similar culture and speak the same language. Kind of. So why, I ask as all the hate commenters start pouring out on this video, are Germany and Austria separate countries in the first place? This is of course not an easy question to answer, but part of the answer actually has more to do with why places like Bavaria or Baden or Lower Saxony even are part of Germany. You see, while the idea of there being a German-speaking country near the center of Europe called Germany is something I'd imagine most of us are pretty used to by now, this hasn't always been the case. Germany was first unified as one singular state back in 1871 by Otto von Bismarck. Before that though, Germany was split up into dozens of small kingdoms, some merely the size of city-states and some the size of small kingdoms. For over a thousand years prior to German unification, the dominating order over all these small states was something called the Holy Roman Empire. Now, history YouTubers all like to point out how the Holy Roman Empire was not holy, Roman, nor an empire, but for our intents and purposes, it definitely wasn't an empire. It was more of a political union between all these small, kind of, sort of nominally independent states, all at least bowing down to the authority of the emperor, who always lived off somewhere within the empire. It changed a lot, though. Now, because of the crazy whack politics of the HRE, there were numerous different powers all vying for greater influence within the Union. One sort of example could be the Hanseatic League, but by the 18th century, there were two dominating powers within the Union, Brandenburg Prussia in the north and Austria in the south. Now I think you can already see where this is going, but of course I'm going to just take the long way around just so we can make this into a video. Austria's House of Habsburg, known today as the main reason why incest is indeed a bad thing, had already held control over the crown of the HRE for around 300 years before these times. But now, Prussia started to emerge onto the scene as a new power. Now, Prussia and Austria actually both liked the idea of a united German-speaking state, but the disagreement here, as would start to repeat itself again and again in world history, was over who would control it. So guys, which city do you think should be the capital of a united German state? Berlin, Berlin, they both said at the same time. So that's kind of where all the drama starts. As if it hasn't already. However, the Holy Roman Empire was not much longer for this world, as Napoleon conquered the area and dismantled the old Union in 1806, re-establishing most of the old states, aside from Prussia and Austria, as the Confederation of the Rhine. This new confederation was in turn quickly dissolved after a Prussian victory against France when they established the German Confederation, which encompassed all the old territories of the Holy Roman Empire, including Prussia and Austria, but not including the territories that they held that weren't previously part of the HRE. This meant that there were effectively parts of Prussia and Austria that weren't part of this confederation. Yeah, history is weird sometimes. As a kind of a loose analogy, that would be kind of like if part of Denmark weren't even in the European Union. Oh, right. The area was then again pushed to a boiling point with the Austro-Prussian War of 1866, which resulted in a decisive Prussian victory and the establishment of the North German Confederation. Then once Bavaria, Baden, and Württemberg were incorporated after a Prussian victory against France, Otto von Bismarck proclaimed the German Empire, the second one, in 1871 crowning King Wilhelm I as Kaiser Wilhelm I. But alas, Austria was not to be a part of this new nation. But before the German Confederation fell, indeed right after it first formed, there was one question that needed to be answered about all this. Will it blend? But also, should Austria be a part of this new Greater Germany? Well, for that, there were two solutions. The Greater German Solution, or the Smaller German Solution. Die Große oder Kleindeutsche Lösung, which basically put out what Germany would look like either with or without Austria, thus preparing for either a small Germany or a thick Germany. I'm so sorry, I'm never saying that again. Austria, however, had one big thorn in its side if it did want to be a part of Germany. Germany was united through a common language and culture. What I mean by that is basically everyone in Germany was a German-speaking German. Austria, however, was very much not. Although this was true with core Austria, 
This was absolutely not true with the rest of their empire, which was itself made up of Hungarians, Serbs, Croats, Poles, Czechs, Romanians, etc. This can be seen as we start to look at what happened after all this took place, as the Austrian Empire became the Empire of Austria-Hungary, which itself wasn't too long for this world in the age of nationalism. After the end of World War I, Austria-Hungary broke, and now Austria was just this little turkey leg up in the Alps. Then a guy with a bad mustache and an even worse agenda who happened to be from Austria wanted to unify all the German-speaking lands and so merged Austria and Germany for the course of World War II, until his side lost the war and Germany and Austria were split up amongst the Allied powers. During this time, however, not only were there suddenly two Germanys and an Austria, but the Allied powers also declared that Germany and Austria would never be allowed to unify. Although I should probably point out that this was also admittedly specified in the Treaty of Versailles after World War I, but still. In addition, basically the only way Austria was able to keep itself from being split apart like Germany was, was by declaring neutrality in the Cold War, which the two Germanys definitely didn't really get the chance to do. Of course, Austria and Germany today aren't exactly in a rush to form a union between themselves. But yeah, basically Austria didn't join at first because they were kind of off doing their own thing, and then Crazy Mustache Man happened, and then the Allies forbid the two countries from reunifying. Assuming they even wanted to, at all. Besides, as both countries are members of the EU, Eurozone, and Schengen area, what exactly would be the point of that today? Now, as for why Australia isn't part of Germany, well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and sharing it, and maybe even supporting the channel on Patreon, or buying some of the merch via Canubis.tv. As always, thanks again for watching, and please subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.